What's up everyone? Welcome to the Durbin Compound. If we're meeting for the first time, my name is Devin Durbin. I'm here to bring you the tools, tips, and tricks to make you more self-sufficient. So today we're going to go over a couple tips and tricks on how to find a circuit breaker and find it fast. So I hope that you find value in my content. Stay tuned. All right, so let's talk about a few tips and tricks to get you to find that circuit breaker quick, fast, and in a hurry. So if you're looking for a breaker for a light fixture, this should be super easy. Obviously, you're going to have your light in the on position so you can see it with your own eyes, and you can maybe have somebody stand by the light while you flip the breakers, or you can make several trips and see when that light goes out. Now, in just a moment, we'll go to the breaker box and I'll show you a couple tips there to get you to narrow it down and, uh, you know, uh, heighten your chances of getting that breaker the first time. Now, if you're looking for a breaker for an outlet, well, guess what? Same theory applies. You can use a simple lamp that you have around the house and you can simply uh, go down to the breaker box and click it off and on until the lamp goes out. Now, if the lamp is further than you can see or it's upstairs, you can run an extension cord or you could use something that makes an audible noise. So something like a hair dryer is something that I recommend because you can hear it and then you know exactly when that breaker goes off. Obviously when using a hair dryer, you want to take the necessary precautions that it's not going to burn up or, or burn anything while you're doing this. But now let's go over to the breaker box and we can, uh, or I'm going to show you exactly how to narrow down a couple things so you're not just flipping everything in the panel. Um, some of you might have many, many breakers. Some of you might just have a few. So we're going to narrow it down and uh, give you the better odds to finding that the first time. All right, guys. So as you can see, I've gone through and I've labeled all of my breakers all the way down to make sure that I know exactly what goes to what. So the you know, the process of elimination here was done with two people so that I can see exactly what's going on here. But here are some things that you want to rule out. So if you have a double pole breaker like this where it's joined together, this is one of your circuits that has 240 volts going to it. So, you know, stuff like your water pump or your water heater or your dryer, um, you know, you can rule some of these things out. So if you have an electric water heater, bam, here, uh, you know, so if you're, if you're not looking for something like an oven, a water heater, a dryer, um, you know, other things like a sub panel to another, uh, another place like the barn or the hot tub or the air conditioning unit, you know, you can definitely rule out these uh, double pole breakers. But if you're looking for one, you know, in particular, that uh, you know is maybe a light fixture or something like that, you can flip these uh, and just a process of elimination, you can see that most of the time, if an electrician did his job correctly, they're going to put the things together that make sense. So in the office, I have the outlets and the lights on the same uh, or adjacent breakers. Now see, I have the kitchen island outlets, refrigerator kitchen outlets, and the can lights all lined up together. So uh, usually, and this is a usual, okay? If you're looking at an outlet, it should be a 20 amp breaker. If you're looking at a light fixture, it may be a 15 amp breaker. So this is not always the case, but sometimes it is the case. Um, see the outlets were put on 15 amp breaker here. Um, you know, this is a house that was built in 2000. So, you know, there's only three outlets in this room. So, you know, not a big deal for a 15 amp, but you know, this has multiple on it. This is the kitchen outlets um, down here, dining room. Um, let's see here, smoke detector. Smoke detectors was a one was one that was very, very difficult to find because this does nothing when you turn it off. So you can't see any lights go out or any outlets go out. That one was hard to find. Um, but you know, as far as it usually goes, you will have outlets on a 20 amp, 
and lights on a 15 in most cases. There might be some cases that, eh, it's uh, you know, a crapshoot, but uh, you can definitely narrow down your choices by getting rid of your two poles and then some of your big appliances, you know, narrow it down and you can find it with a simple light and maybe having somebody yell or you doing the leg work. So I hope this helps. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember that it doesn't always take test equipment or fancy pieces of equipment to get the job done. A standard household item can sometimes be your savior in a project like this. So I hope you guys found value in today's content. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you're into. And if you're subscribed to the channel, I guess we'll see you guys in the next video.